A property that some solutions have is something called electrical conductivity. Here we have a battery, light bulb, and some wires. Because these wires are not connected, this is called an open circuit. No electricity can flow because there isn't a continuous pathway for it. But when we touch the wires together, there's a closed circuit and the light bulb lights up. And when we disconnect the wires again, the light bulb goes off. Here's a device we can use to test the electrical conductivity of something. It's an inexpensive flashlight from a dollar store. When we touch the probes together, the circuit is completed and the light bulb glows. Cardboard does not conduct, as we see when we touch both probes to it. The quarter, which is made out of metal, does conduct, but the plastic lens cap does not. Now we'll use this device to test the conductivity of some liquids. Here we have distilled water, or pure water on the left, and tap water on the right. We'll add another label to the bottom of the containers. We'll turn off the light so we can see the flashlight better. Notice it does not light up at all in the distilled water. Distilled water is a non-conductor. However, when we dip the probes into tap water, the light glows a little bit. Tap water has a very slight conductivity. We've created a table that we can use to record our results. In the left column, we'll name the liquid or solution and in the right column, we'll note the conductivity of each liquid or solution. Remember the liquid on the left was distilled water, and the distilled water has no conductivity. It's a non-conductor. Tap water was in the beaker on the right. Remember the flashlight lit up a little bit, so its conductivity was slight. Now we'll compare the conductivities of tap water on the left this time and salt water, or salt solution, which we have placed in the container on the right. Again, we'll turn off the light, as we'd expect, the tap water shows slight conductivity. But notice the light is much brighter in the salt solution. Salt solution is a very good conductor. We'll note that in here that the salt solution has high conductivity. Now we'll test the conductivity of tap water and vinegar and compare these two. As we would expect, the light glows dimly in the tap water we see that it is slightly brighter in the vinegar solution. We'll repeat these so you can see the difference. Vinegar is slightly brighter. We'll write down vinegar solution on our table, and we'll describe its conductivity as moderate. We'll add distilled water to the two containers, and we'll label the one on the right as sugar water. Then we'll add sugar cubes to this container. We've broken up the sugar cubes, and now we'll stir them to dissolve them. Now we'll label them, and we'll turn out the lights and test their conductivities. The distilled water does not conduct at all, and neither does the sugar solution. What we see on the flashlight are just reflections. These liquids are both non-conductors. So we'll add sugar solution to the table, and list its conductivity as none. So to review, distilled water and sugar water are both non-conductors. Tap water is a slight conductor, vinegar is a moderate conductor, and salt solutions have very high conductivity. You may wonder how we can explain these differences. First we'll talk about salt solution and explain why its conductivity is so high. We can think of a solid salt crystal as being made up of a large number of tiny particles called ions. Half of these ions have a positive charge, and half of them have a negative charge. The attraction between positive and negative charges keeps these ions together in the crystal. Remember, this is only a simple model. The actual ions would be much too small to see, and there would be billions of them in a single crystal. When we add water to the container, the water causes the ions and the salt to break apart and spread out throughout the water. This model represents a solution of salt. Now we'll add two probes from the conductivity tester. One of the probes will have a positive charge, and the other one will have a negative charge. Because opposite charges attract, the positive ions move toward the probe on the right, which is negative. And negative ions move toward the positive probe on the left. So solutions that have a lot of ions are able to conduct electricity through the movement of their ions. Salt solutions contain a lot of ions that are able to move easily. This makes salt solutions good conductors of electricity.
Solutions that have ions and are able to conduct electricity are called electrolytes. Salt solutions are examples of electrolytes. Because salt solutions have high conductivity, they are called strong electrolytes. Remember, our sugar solution did not conduct electricity at all. If we look at a model of our sugar crystal, we see that it is made up of particles called neutral molecules. Neutral molecules are not charged like ions are. We'll add water to the container in our model. Sugar molecules also break away from the crystal and spread out. However, unlike ions from salt, sugar molecules are not charged. When we dip our probes into the sugar solution, the neutral molecules are not attracted to these probes. There are no charged ions that move in this solution. Therefore, there is no flow of charges, so sugar solutions do not conduct electricity. Because sugar solutions have no conductivity, we call them non-electrolytes. Now we'll look at our vinegar solution. Remember, vinegar solution is a moderate conductor. Scientists can also explain this using a simple model. Vinegar can be made starting with pure acetic acid, which consists of neutral molecules. When water is added to pure acetic acid, the molecules spread out evenly to form a solution. Most of these molecules remain neutral, but a few of them break up and form ions. So vinegar solution is mainly neutral molecules with only a small number of positive and negative ions present. When positive and negative probes from our conductivity tester are dipped into a vinegar solution, the negative ions move toward the positive probe and the positive ions move toward the negative probe. There is a flow of ions, so the solution does conduct electricity. But because there are few ions compared to neutral molecules, the flow of ions is quite small. Therefore, a vinegar solution is only a moderate conductor. Because vinegar is only a moderate conductor, we call it a weak electrolyte. Now we'll take a closer look at distilled water. We have represented water so far as a light blue liquid. But a simple model of water shows that it is made up of a large number of neutral water molecules like we have in our diagram here. In the previous models we used, these water molecules were left out for simplicity. Now we'll dip positive and negative probes from our conductivity tester into the pure water. Water molecules are not charged, so they aren't attracted to the charged probes. There is no flow of charges, so distilled water does not conduct electricity. Because distilled water or pure water has no conductivity, we can call it a non-electrolyte. Now we'll look at tap water. Remember we identified tap water as having very slight conductivity. We can explain this by thinking about where tap water comes from. When water runs over rocks and soil, ions from the minerals in the rocks or soil can enter the water and become dissolved in it. Substances added to water in water treatment plants can also add ions to the water. So we can imagine a simple model of tap water as consisting mainly of neutral molecules and a few ions. Positive ions move toward the negative probe and negative ions move toward the positive probe. There's a flow of ions, so tap water does conduct some electricity. But because there are very, very few ions compared to neutral molecules, the flow of ions is very small. Therefore, tap water is only a slight conductor. Because tap water is only a very slight conductor, we call it a very weak electrolyte. Electrolytes, or solutions with ions, have many important applications. Batteries, like this alkaline battery here, have electrolytes inside of them. Electrolytes in automobile batteries are usually in liquid form. They help conduct the electrical current and take part in the chemical reactions that make the current. The most common automobile battery contains sulfuric acid as an electrolyte. This is very corrosive and dangerous. Even fuel cells, which produce electricity for modern electric cars, have electrolytes inside of them. Electrolytes are also very important in our body. Electrolytes in our blood and kidneys help control the amount of water in our body. Electrolytes in our nerve cells carry electrical signals through our nervous system. These are needed for many things in our bodies, such as making our muscles move and making our brain function properly. A good balance of electrolytes in our body is very important.